Hello everybody, thank you for coming back to my channel. I guess I just want to know how, how you're doing, how your family's doing, how your pet's doing, just because of this whole coronavirus thing. But I guess it's lucky timing because it gives me plenty of time at home to uh, learn how to make YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing like a lot of work just learning how to make these videos. It's like a lot more in depth than just a screen capture and some mic. Thankfully, I go to a school where I can borrow like a lot better equipment, a better microphone, and and all that sort of stuff. In addition to making videos, I might want to do a video later down the line about um, just like the starting process of making these videos because I feel like you have to start off at a higher production quality than back in the past where you could just do your iPhone. I mean, you still can, but for something like this, you definitely need to take into consideration like audio just because like I'm not showing my face or anything. I'm just kind of showing my artwork and my thoughts. This is my character, Valerie. Um, I know the file says Andrea, but there's like a couple facial expressions in here. I do need to get better at labeling and organizing my Photoshop files. So if you're starting school, you know, being an art major, definitely stay organized. Make a folder for all of your classes, label everything, it will make your life so much easier. Anyway, this is a sketch of some facial expressions for my character Valerie. I've just been going through with a marquee tool, mapping out like all the different shadow areas or details and skin tone and, you know, later on her jacket and hair and just kind of like paint bucket filling it in. I'm still following my sketch at this point. I'm breaking it further down into even more like simplified shapes and colors. I feel like using the marquee tool like helps a lot with this process in terms of like forcing yourself to be more stylized rather than like you know beating your artwork to death trying to make it look hyper realistic or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with hyper realism. I have mad respect for people who do that and like that's personally where I started off with art. Studying illustration you have like really hard deadlines for things so you just don't have as much time to do that sort of work as an illustrator. I mean, you can look at like artists like Donato Giancola, who does a lot of like Dungeons and Dragons fantasy type work and his oil paintings are unreal. And also he's a super nice guy. I've met him a couple times at like different conventions and just through school. So if you're into super realism and still doing illustration, definitely check him out. But for me personally and like the artists I'm studying, um, I'm trying to get like a more stylized, more color and shape oriented type of work. Just because not only does it satisfy the deadlines for illustrators, but like I've been really liking how my artwork is starting to look using this kind of method so just going through and picking colors and as you saw earlier I already had like a mock-up of what I wanted this character to look like so I've just been borrowing from that color palette as I make these facial expressions I do apologize that you cannot see the layers panel the screen capture software that I'm currently using does not allow you to see the layers, but I have a different layer for like every different color I'm using right now. The top of her hair, that's like one layer above everything else I've done so far. But then I'll make another layer for like the back of her hair that kind of goes like behind her neck. <laughs> Bless me. I have been a little sick the past couple of days, but I have already gotten three tests from my doctor's office so I can verify I do not have the coronavirus. I am just a little sick. Also, my friend's house that I stay at a lot, they just got a new kitten and I'm also allergic to cats, but you know, I've still been playing with this cat and like tossing her around and everything like not like tossing her around like chucking her, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been playing with a cute kitten. She's absolutely adorable. She is just a little ball of fun and likes to sleep on your shoulder. She is seven weeks old, so she is very tiny. But yeah, she's a good girl and this is a good family, so I know they'll take care of her. So I'm just continuing to layer on like basic shapes and like trying to stylize things like the hair. I have a lot of fun with the hair. Normally, if I had more time to do an illustration like this, I probably would have put like a lot more detail into things. Because this is for a visual development class and we have to do like a crap ton of work in a very short amount of time. Just getting the basic idea and feeling down is more important than anything else. I also didn't realize at this point that I gave her a gray streak. I wanted her to be like an older kind of woman. She's kind of like the big baddie of the story, by the way. Yeah, like the evil, evil villain. But um, I didn't realize that I gave her like Claire Saffitt's little gray streak and I feel bad. Because, like, Claire from Bon Appetit, as far as I can see from watching their videos, she is an extremely sweet, uh, intelligent, talented young lady. And I didn't mean to, I guess, demonize the gray streak in a way. So I hope she takes no offense to this. 
you know, I, I felt bad for doing doing Claire's iconic gray streak dirty like this, putting it on my main villain character. And now you'll see I'm kind of going through using the marquee tool again, but this time with the gradient tool. And I have borrowed from the color swatches from like the other facial expressions I've done. This is where we get into blending modes, and this is where I personally feel like this makes my artwork look really dynamic. As you can see, I'm using the marquee tool. I'm mapping out like the areas of shadow, and I'm putting a purple semi-transparent gradient on it. That's Andrea, the little um, character you just saw there. I'm just borrowing some of the color swatches from the color overlays I used for her character. The reason I'm doing this is because areas of shadow, you want to be cooler so they recess back into the composition and they don't stand out as much. The reason I'm doing these color overlays is to just give that kind of dynamic to make these facial expressions look, I guess, a little more alive. I'm still trying to look for a way to I guess kind of blend the world of like dimension but still stylization and like I personally really like doing this process because like I said it makes me feel like my artwork's actually coming to life at this point. Again I don't have the layers panel to be able to show you this but I'm adding like different colored gradients and then I'm going to into the blending modes and I'll choose like a different one like pin light or luminosity or overlay and all of these will give you a different effect on how the the color gradients interact with the colors underneath it. Again, working in illustration, you don't have like a lot of time to fidget with things. So there's like obviously things that I see that I would change or go back into. Once you start studying illustration, you start to realize like just how much work you have to accomplish in, you know, a, a certain time frame. So while I would have loved to have spent more time making even more expressions or diving more into this kind of process of making these like two dimensional but like still feel like they could belong in a space, I guess, illustrations. You, you just don't have the time to really do that in school. But this is like part of studying illustration is that you're given a ton of work in school and have deadlines because that prepares you for the real world where you'll have like longer deadlines, but you'll have a lot more work to do. I like how I experimented with making her look a little more unhinged in some areas than others. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped some people or if you just wanted to know how I made art. So yeah, this was my second YouTube video. As I learn more, you know, I'll get less awkward. The audio will probably get better. The video editing will probably become better. Everything in general will just get better just because I will get better as I do these. I hope you liked the video. Um, and if you didn't, then let me know why. <laughs> you have a great day, guys. I hope you all are staying, you know, safe and hygienic during this time, whatever you have to do. <laughs> All right, you have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.